Hi all, I'm Ollie, this is Simply Stitchy and today's video we're going to be looking at this little guy. I recently picked this up at a local flea market for five bucks. Um, pretty much as you see it now, I haven't done anything to it, I haven't cleaned it, I haven't oiled it, nothing. And what I thought would be a great video today is to show you what I do um, to give a little bit of TLC to these old machines when they finally make it home with me. So if you want to find out, join me in today's video. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the machine the right way around so that you can actually see what it is. This is a Wheeler & Wilson D9. It's got a serial number that puts it um, in around about the transition phase from when Wheeler and Wilson were producing machines to when they got took over by Singer which was in 1905. If you want to know more about Wheeler and Wilson I have got another video on the channel. Its link is here or it will be in the description box below and that's where I go into the, the history of the machine. This particular machine isn't in the best of nick. Um, the only thing that I've tested so far is how well it moves. It's actually got quite a free movement. There's no hang-ups, there's nothing sticking and it's not particularly stiff. So I think all it really needs is a good clean and a good oiling. It is missing a few parts. It's missing its base. Judging by the, um, the look of the hand wheel here, this I think used to be part of a treadle. Um, so this would be the head of the treadle and then it would be fitted into um, a treadle base. It's missing the the little screw that holds the foot on. Um, it looks as though somebody's actually welded the foot to the um, the presser bar here because the thumb screw is missing. Um, other than that it looks as though it's pretty much complete. But what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to clean some of this um, residual dust from it. I'm going to oil it and at that stage we'll see if it's going to work. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to get rid of some of the, the loose dust that's accumulated in the areas that these machines always pick up dust which little nooks and crannies. Um, and to do that what we need is we need the softest cloth or brush that you can put your hands on and it needs to be as soft as possible so that there's no risk of actually causing any more scratches or that kind of damage to the machine. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use this. This is actually a makeup brush. Um, you can pick these up most places big box stores, uh, pharmacies, chemists, you name it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the dustiest places and working away from the machine I'm just going to just gently brush away all that um, accumulated dust. And I'm just going to keep working my way over the machine just taking that dust off. You'll notice that I'm starting at the top and working down because obviously if you start on the base and work up then you're likely to knock dust from the top onto where you've just cleaned which just you don't want to be doing that. Okay so next I'm gonna just do the, the tension discs just carefully moving the dust away from the machine. Now I'm just gonna keep working my way around the machine just gently knocking that surface dust away. Now the reason why I'm not using um, any kind of abrasive chemical cleaner or anything like that is because this machine's got decals and if you use any kind of chemical cleaner, if you use any kind of um, chemical product that these designed to clean grease or stuff off your hands for instance you are at risk of taking those decals straight off so although it's going to take me a lot longer to clean it this way it is actually the safest way of cleaning one of these machines just doing it the old-fashioned way using a brush and a bit of elbow grease <laughs> The next thing 
is to grab your trusty sewing machine oil and you can use this to clean these machines. Um, when these machines were first invented uh, the manufacturers knew that the one substance that was more than likely to come into contact with these decals was going to be the oil you used on the machines. So this has been formulated not to damage the decals and what you do is you just put a dab here and there and using either cotton wool pads or cotton wool board balls you just gently rub it on the surface of the machine trying to get into those little nooks and crannies to clean it. And even so I am rubbing but I'm not rubbing particularly harshly or vigorously it's just gently backwards and forwards and you just keep working across the machine just gently working that onto the surface like so and I think while I'm here I'll actually take the price tag off it as well Gently peel that off, make sure it doesn't bring anything off with it. If any of you out there are considering selling a cast iron machine with decals, don't stick stickers to it. see with just a couple of minutes going over it briefly with some sewing machine oil you start to see the, the dust disappearing and the beauty of the machine shining through. Now obviously before I do anything else with it it's not worth me um, looking at replacing the feet or anything like that until I can work out if it actually runs and sews and before I do that I need to make sure that I give the internal workings a nice oiling as well. So using some advice given to me by my dad quite a few years ago, if it's metal and it rubs against something else that's metal, oil it. So that is what I'm going to do. Now like most sewing machines you'll find that these old 
girls have got oil ports or little holes where you can put oil dotted around the machine um, and this one is no exception oil points on the top oops I've just missed Set that up a minute. it's got inspection ports which I'm going to have to put a little bit of oil on see if I can get that to release it's a bit tight already started to free up quite nicely. I turn it oh, upside down for a minute. It's got points underneath that also need oiling. While we're underneath it's got a really interesting bobbin on here. Um, if you can see that there there isn't a bobbin case on this machine um, you simply lift that little pin and the bobbin just simply removes if you can get your fingernails under it there you go and that's the bobbin and it literally just sits in the bobbin race and then that closes over to keep it in place, which I think is really nifty. And it's just a case of oiling the bits on the underneath and giving those a bit of a clean. I'm going to use a toothbrush on this one and just gently get rid of some of the dust and debris that's on that drive shaft. <laughs> already working quite nicely now we've got a bit of a squeak over here somewhere I think it might be over here actually oh there you go Look how much easier that's going now Again, as you oil it, just work it through by turning the wheel. It's not that easy to keep it going because it hasn't got the hand crank on it. But that is feeling a lot better.
try and do is very carefully try and grab hold of this with these um, just try and give a little bit more leverage manage to get it open although I do have to admit I cheated a little um, I asked my other half to do it and he managed to get the pliers to work <laughs> today's video it was just a quick insight into how I take care of the machines that managed to find their way home with me if you want to see the next video where I actually find out if this machine will work or not then remember to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell so that YouTube can give you a notification when that video goes live and in the meantime why not check out some of the other videos on my channel at the moment using these links here or the ones that I'll pop in the description box below for you. In the meantime, whatever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing it with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.